Hello, my name is Risha. Welcome to the YMCA of San Francisco's Classrooms for All. Today, we are gonna be learning about the magic of trees. All you'll need today is an avocado and some toothpicks and a cup and some water. We are gonna learn how to make zero waste guacamole. You might notice that here on the table, I have some things that come from trees. I have these persimmons. Wow, these persimmons are beautiful. They are a fruit that grows right here in the Bay Area. And I also have some avocados. They also grow right here on trees in the Bay Area in California. And speaking of the land in California, let's take a moment to acknowledge the land and acknowledge the people for whom this is their homeland, the Ramatush Ohlone people. If you're interested in learning more about the land that you are on and whose homeland you live in, you can check out native-land.ca. Now that we've taken a moment to acknowledge the land that we're on and the people that we share it with, let's also take a moment to acknowledge the amazing things that grow in this land. Wow. So the trees that produce the fruits that we eat are some of my favorite plants. And so for this activity, we're gonna learn how to grow a tree in your very own home. These, believe it or not, are avocado trees. Yes, it's true. These avocado trees were started at very different times. Can you guess which of these is the oldest? There's this tree, which is about five or six inches tall from the pit. When I lift it out of the jar, oh, wow, there's so many roots on it. When I put it back inside, I'm sure to be very, very gentle. Gentle but firm. This second tree hmm, is about two and a half inches tall. And when I lift it up, its roots are very, very small. Do you see the white part underneath? This is the root. This is the newest part of the root. This is the stem. These are the leaves. And these are the leaves. This third option, hmm. This stem is about three and a half inches tall. When I lift it up, its roots are a little smaller, a little more condensed. What else are you noticing about the differences between these trees so far? If we hold something behind them, is it easier to notice the differences or more difficult? And last but not least, we have here an avocado pit that has been sitting in water for about a month. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to turn an avocado pit like this one into a baby avocado tree in my very own home. This is when it will be helpful to have our materials. We have our glass container, but you can use any container that will hold water. You can see I have a little cup, a little glass, a little jar. This is a jar that I got out of the recycling. What a great way to divert our energy. We'll take some water and we'll look at how the avocado pit is doing. When we look at it, we can see that there's one side that's more pointed and one side that's more rounded. The rounded side has a little bump on it. This is where the root will start to come out. You can see that this has a brown skin on top. This brown skin will probably be on the avocado pit that you peel as well. This avocado pit is not, does not have its brown paper anymore. 
This brown paper releases something called tannins. Tannins will actually make it difficult for the root to come out. So what we can do is soak it for a few days. This one has been soaking for a long, long time. It will make it easier for us to peel the paper off. This is a very squishy, slimy job. If you have a spoon, it will make it easier. You can also score it with a knife. But be careful, it is slippery. I'm not cutting very deep. I'm making sure to be very gentle. I might even use the back of the knife. Wow, look at the difference. This is a fun thing to do together. This protective layer helps the seed from sprouting too quickly. Seeds of all kinds have different ways of staying protected until it's time to start popping out. Some seeds will undergo a process in the winter where they get cold before it is time to start growing. Some seeds will experience fire before it is time to start growing. Some seeds will need to be crushed or mushed or chewed in order to break open. Look at this seed now. Oh, this is amazing. Look at what this avocado seed has become. Oh, it looks so much more like these other avocado seeds now that it's been peeled. I wanna make sure that the skin from the avocado seed, oh, it's so dark, ooh. I wanna make sure that goes in the compost. Did you know that two thirds of the food that we bring home is actually the food that we consume? And it's true. Apparently American households on average, compost about one third of the food that is brought into the house. That's a lot of food waste. I'm really thankful that we have a source for composting here in San Francisco. Did you know that? I wanna make sure that the skin from this avocado seed goes into the compost and not the trash. If it goes into the trash, it will go to a landfill. And if it goes to a landfill, it won't be able to decompose in a way that captures carbon and stays in the food cycle. If it goes to a landfill instead of the compost, it can actually release methane gas, which is extremely damaging to the ozone layer. Let's all take a nice deep breath of gratitude together. Oh, that feels great. One more time. When we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide can become food for plants like these avocado trees. If you have a leafy plant in your home, you can breathe in some gratitude and breathe out an exchange to that plant as well. Now that we have our avocado seed, it's ready for its transformation to continue. This is when we'll need our toothpicks. When I put the avocado seed down, I wanna be very gentle. Sometimes the root can already be sprouting out of the avocado seed. If it breaks, it's much, much harder for that seed to recover. So when I put it down, I want to be very careful. I don't want the bottom of the avocado seed to snap off whatever root growth has already started. I have here some wooden toothpicks. You might find bamboo or some other type. I think it would be great if we end up using toothpicks that were already destined for the compost or the trash. That's right, if 
it's made of wood, it can go into the compost as well. We can't put plastic toothpicks in the compost though. They won't biodegrade. When something biodegrades, it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces and is able to be consumed by microorganisms like fungus, bacteria, and invertebrates. Do you know what an invertebrate is? It's a creature without a vertebrae. Your vertebrae is your backbone. Let's do a nice backbone stretch. And to the other side. Our vertebrae is what makes it possible for us to stand up straight, look down, look up, look to the side, look to the side. Ah, it helps hold up our head that gives us our amazing ideas. Ah, if you want to thank your vertebrae, you can reach up one arm, bend at the elbow and give yourself a pat on the back. And on the other side, give yourself a pat on the back. Thank you, vertebrae. Invertebrates are small creatures that do not have a vertebrae. Invertebrates. You might think of some creatures that have an exoskeleton, like a roly-poly. When compost is able to break down and exchange nutrients with these living creatures, it's able to stay in the food cycle. Our food web can be nourished from top to bottom and side to side. But if that food ends up in the landfill, that food web is broken and that nutrients gets completely lost. So thank you so much for taking the extra time to compost today. But these are not destined for the compost. No, no, these are gonna be reused. What an excellent way to make sure our energy is being used efficiently. We wanna reuse before we recycle or compost. What if you don't have toothpicks? That's okay, you don't need them. You can see that I've actually started one of these or two of these without toothpicks at all. They're just in a very tiny, tiny glass so that there's space underneath for the root to start growing. But if you have a larger container like this one, it will be helpful to suspend the avocado you might come up with a really interesting engineering option if you don't have toothpicks. I challenge you to think of a creative way to suspend this avocado seed above the water so its roots can start growing down. So for this next step, I'm gonna show you how to use the toothpicks. I'm gonna be poking into the avocado, but I wanna make sure to be careful because I don't wanna slip. This is a little slippery and these are kind of sharp. And I wanna make sure that at the end, this part where the root is, and the root is coming out, is going to be able to be submerged in the water. So I don't wanna put the toothpicks too low, but then again, I don't wanna put them too high because the weight of the avocado seed might break, um, might break the toothpicks or it might become unstable that way. It's better if you aim for kind of the middle of the avocado seed. Fantastic. I like to point my toothpicks a little bit up so that it can rest inside of the glass. And we're gonna make a triangle of toothpicks. Wow, it looks great. Nice job. Does yours look like this one? Does it look a little different? Next, we need to make sure that we're putting water in our glass. We'll let our avocado seed rest there. I'm so grateful for this water. Did you know that our water comes to us from a watershed? Wow, look at that. It fits perfectly. Oh, 
this seed has begun its journey from the inside of an avocado to being a full-fledged tree. This avocado seed has been in water for about eight months. This avocado seed has been in water for about five months. And this avocado seed has been in water for three and a half months. This avocado seed has been in water for about two minutes. In about five years, these avocado trees will be producing enough fruit for us to all have guacamole together. I wonder what it will look like. These can stay in water for up to two years, I've heard. But the important thing is to change the water frequently. I noticed this water has started to get kind of cloudy, which tells me it's time to change it about every week or two. Thank you so much for joining me and learning how to make zero waste guacamole. The next time you open up an avocado, remember that seed can turn into an oxygen producing living plant inside your very own home. The inside of the seed has the starting instructions for the plant to start growing once it's in the water. Remember to change the water about once every week or two. And remember, this is an opportunity to think creatively about how to reduce our waste, reuse what we have, and recycle or repurpose the things that we no longer have a use for. Let's take a nice deep breath together. Thank you. The next time that you are breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide, you can thank a plant. And maybe there's one in your home you can thank in person. If there's a plant that you see on a walk, like a tree or a blade of grass, you can also go up to it and give it a thank you. Let's talk now about the trees that these persimmons came from. Oh my goodness. It's so exciting to learn more about different foods. Now these persimmons are actually a fantastic source of vitamin A. We have 55% of our daily value of vitamin A in one single persimmon. We also get about 22% of our vitamin C. That's fantastic. What a great way to get our nutrition locally. These persimmons are actually from a variety of tree called hachia. A hachia persimmon tree, oh, they can be about 70 feet tall when they're fully matured. Isn't that amazing? When I picked these persimmons, I had to crane my neck quite a bit and reach up tall. Let's do some reaching up together. Let's imagine picking persimmons. We can bring them down to our plate in front of us. Amazing. It's incredible that we get our nutrition from plants. It's so exciting to think about the life cycle of these plants here. But there's one plant here that's not a persimmon. Do you see it? Hmm. Oh, there it is. This is an apple that I got from the grocery store. You'll notice it comes with a free piece of trash. <laughs> That's what I like to say about the sticker that it comes with. I wanna challenge you to make some art with your stickers. Yes, because even though this provides important information at the cash register, for example, the country of origin, whether it's organic or not, you can look at the number. If it has a nine in the front, it means it's organic. This one even says USA. And sometimes it'll often have the variety of the food that it is on as well. This says Honeycrisp because it's from a Honeycrisp apple. So because your apple or your piece of fruit comes with a sticker, I'm gonna challenge you to make a sticker collection. You might even decide to decorate other things with them, or maybe to decorate an envelope to send to a friend. 
I also want to recognize that this apple did also come from a tree. When I am appreciating that nature is everywhere, I like to take time to notice what is similar and what is different. We actually have three different types of plants here on the table that come from trees, three different fruits. You might be wondering, is an avocado really a fruit? Yes, because the seed is on the inside. An apple is a fruit because the seed is on the inside. And the persimmon is a fruit. The seeds are on the inside. These persimmons, the Hychia variety, are shaped more like a peach, as opposed to the Fuyu variety, which is flat on the bottom and is shaped more like a little jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Most people like to eat the Fuyu persimmons when they're still kind of firm. I like to eat the Hychia persimmons when they're fully orange and a little bit squishy. Mmm. The starches will have converted into sugars. That's amazing. So we've already started learning about how trees can offer us oxygen. They can offer us nutrients. They can offer us moments of reflection and scavenger hunts for unusual stickers. What about other things as well? Oh, and we've also noticed how trees can provide us with tools like these toothpicks. These toothpicks came from a tree as well. When I look on the box, it doesn't say what kind of tree. Hmm. I wonder where these were made. What an interesting research project. Is there something you use a lot in your home that comes from a tree? Maybe you have a special stick from a place that you really, really love. I've turned some of my favorite sticks into works of art. You can see I've knitted something onto this special stick here. Ooh, this one I turned into a wind chime. You can make a wind chime at home too by tying on old bits of metal or bells or silverware that you're not using anymore and connecting it to pieces of wood, special sticks that you love. You might even find yourself really noticing a special stick that's small or a special stick that's a little bigger. There are even some fibers that are made from wood and from trees. Here are some knitting needles. And of course, there's all kinds of art materials made from wood and trees. There are all kinds of art materials made from wood and from trees, from paper to colored pencils, the wrappings of your crayons, there is paper everywhere and evidence of our connection to trees. For this next activity, you can use some paper to make a fortune teller. So you'll need some paper, something to draw with or make beautiful art on that paper, and some scissors. Maybe you'll find a piece of paper that's ready to be recycled. <gasps> I found one. This piece of paper is ready to be reused. The first thing I'm going to do is turn this rectangle into a square. So I'm gonna fold one corner and make crease. So I fold a triangle and then I make a crease. Then I'm going to cut off this extra piece here.
I'm gonna cut this piece as well. I'll set these aside for later. So now we have one fold here. It's time for another one. Opposite way. Want to make the corners touch and then fold a crease. So you should have a big X in your paper of folds. Looks good. We're ready for the next step. Now we're going to fold a midline. So take the long side and fold to the next long side. I guess there isn't really a long side anymore because we made it a square. Isn't it amazing how things can change so quickly? Oh, looks good. Now we're ready to make another fold the other way. Awesome. So we've now folded this four times. One, two, three, four. We're going to keep on folding. We're going to fold the corners into the center. We want to make sure to stop when it's crossing over that line. This is a great thing to do with the people that you live with. Maybe this is something that you will decide to send to somebody else that you don't live with. It's fun to get mail that's handmade. It almost looks like an envelope. Look at that. I noticed that it's a little smaller now. So you should have your little flaps tucked in. Now it's time for the next step. The flappy side goes underneath. And you guessed it, we're going to fold in again. Again, the corners are going to fold to the center. If you're using thick paper like me, you might have to press really hard to get a fold. But I believe in you, you can do it. This paper came from trees and those trees were so strong. We're feeling that strength now as we fold this paper. I wonder where these trees grew. How old were they when they were cut down? Were they transported very far away? What was it like to mill them? What happened to the extra parts that weren't turned into paper? <gasps> Look at that, we are doing a great job. Now we're gonna fold, to reinforce it, we're gonna fold across the middle and across the middle, plus sign style. We're going to fold and unfold and then fold and unfold like this. Fold, crease, unfold, fold, crease, unfold. All right. Now that we have made all of these folds, we should notice that it's kind of bendy. Wee! This is so exciting. I'm going to fold it in half too to help me. This paper is very thick. So what we should be able to do now is put our fingers into the little flaps that poke out like this. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, you have made an amazing fortune teller. So if we move our hands like a little pincer, it will actually open. And if we move our hands away from each other, it can open that way. <gasps> this is also really fun to make a puppet. Yay! Okay, so what are we gonna put on our fortune teller? Hmm. One thing that I like to put is numbers on the outside. Let's see how many sides we have. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you know anything else in nature that has eight? Hmm, the next time you pass a tree or look out the window at a bird, or watch how many seconds it takes someone to cross the street, you might notice the number eight. Hmm, you'll have to tell me. This way we can open this eight times. So this way we can get ready to play a game with somebody. You might ask someone to pick a number. You can pick a number one through eight. Hmm, I pick two. One, two. Or you might ask them to pick a different number. I pick five. One, two, three, four, five. So on the inside of all of these, we are gonna put other numbers. Or you can put colors, or picture, or word. For now, I'll just put numbers. And again, we're gonna have numbers. One through eight, you can pick whatever numbers you want. They could be totally random. Although if they're too high, it might take you a very long time to play this game, which is maybe sometimes a good thing, depending on how you like how long you like to play games for. <gasps> okay, let's take a look at what we have so far. <gasps> we have level one. Yes, fantastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on the inside, we have level two. So then someone gets to pick one of the numbers here. I see numbers one, two, five, and six. Let's pick five. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> and one last time. Let's see. I see three, four, seven, and eight. Let's pick four. One, two, three, four. <gasps> and then you can pick the last number from one of these, which means we have to write our fortunes on the inside. Oh, this is so exciting. So for each of these eight triangles, you get to write something special. Oh, maybe it's great news, like you will find a penny the next time you go for a walk. Or maybe it's bad news, like you will lose a penny the next time you go for a walk. I like for us to think about these trees that this paper came from. Hmm. What are some lessons we can learn from these trees? Hmm. What about, what are some lessons we can learn from these trees? What about, you will stand tall in the face of a challenge. What's another lesson we can learn from trees? We have some good ways to remember our lessons here in front of us. Hmm. Stop and take a deep breath. Stop and take a deep breath of gratitude. What about hug a tree? It will bring you luck. Well, we've talked about the leaves of the tree, the stem of the tree, the seed. What about the root? Mm. Get connected. Amazing, we have our fortunes. We can fold them in. We have our layer two of numbers. We can fold those in. And we have our layer one of numbers. Ooh. So let's say somebody picks number three. One, two, three. Let's say they pick number three again. One, two, three. Oh, let's say they pick number two, one, two. 
And then to get their fortune, let's pick this one. Number six. Let's see what it says. <gasps> get connected to your roots. Amazing. <gasps> what an excellent reminder for us to be connecting to the trees. Thank you so much for making a fortune teller with me and for reusing some of our paper that came from trees. Thank you so much for making some crafts with me. And thinking creatively about the materials that we have at home, the ways that we can appreciate nature all around. And thank you for learning how to plant an avocado tree with me. It's amazing that we can actually start the cycle of a plant right in our very own home. Just a little bit of water, a little bit of patience, and a lot of love. And don't forget, these plants do need our love. They need our carbon dioxide and our attention. Thank you. If you liked this activity and you wanna keep learning about nature being everywhere or other classes at the YMCA of San Francisco, you can visit our Classrooms for All at ymcasf.org slash classrooms for all. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you again soon. Did you know that YMCA of San Francisco never closed? When shelter in place happened, we could no longer provide in-person programming. We quickly shifted to provide youth and family programming virtually. As early as April, we started providing on-demand activities in our YMCA of San Francisco YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to be making a geodesic dome. Today, we're going to be making a hovercraft. The science around this activity is really awesome. In addition, we have a regular schedule of activities for our youth and families to join live. We feature read-alouds, yoga, family Zumba, arts and crafts, drawing clubs, and more. So don't miss out on our virtual youth and family offerings. Visit www.ymcasf.org for more info and class schedules.